Hello everyone, this is Steve Huff at stevehuffphoto.com and since I have all these cameras here right now I decided to take a look at each one of them because I get a lot of emails asking me to compare uh, the Leica ME slash M9 with the M or the RX1 with the M or the RX1 with the Fuji X100S and here they all are right in front of me and you can kind of get an idea of the size so let's start with the RX1 and Fuji X100S uh, as you can see the RX1 has a much fatter lens than the one on the X100. Uh, and the X100S lens is the same lens as the X100, and I can tell you it's a fantastic lens, great lens, though it does uh, suffer a little bit of softness wide open at f2. The Sony Carl Zeiss lens also is an f2. This is a true 35mm, where this is a 24 uh equivalent 35 because of the APS-C sensor. This has a full frame imaging sensor and has been rated, you know, if you go by those kind of things, DxO rated it as one of the top three full frame sensors ever tested. Um, I can say that in real world use, it's a fantastic sensor capable of doing just about anything you want from low light to high light. The dynamic range is insane on this sensor. It's very good. I'd say the dynamic range uh, this probably has the most dynamic range I've seen on any camera sensor to date that I've used. Maybe the D800 would be up there with it. Um, so the um, RX1 is a very handsome camera. I have the Garris case on it right now. I keep it on. Um, and it's, it's kind of heavy. It's very solid, especially with the case and the battery in. And here's the X100 in the back. My LCD got scratched. So as you can see, there's the, the back of each camera. Uh, if you look at it like this, the X100 looks like the more comfortable camera to hold because it's a little longer. The X100 is a little thicker and a little longer in the body size. The RX1 is a little smaller, but the only place where the RX1 is bigger is right there because the lens is bigger. But the RX1, this was my camera of the year of 2012, and for good reason because it's one hell of a camera. I mean, it can do just about anything. It's small any light situation. The only thing it's not good for is sports or action because it doesn't have a blazing fast AF. It does not have phase detect autofocus. It only has contrast detect. But with that, I've never missed a shot with the RX1. The X100 now has phase detect and contrast detect. The autofocus is much improved over any previous Fuji X body in existence. This is the fastest Fuji you can get from AF to responsiveness to menu browsing, the whole shebang, everything is just quick. Uh, it's very, very much improved, though it does now have an X-Trans sensor, which uh, I was never a huge fan of the X-Trans sensor because I loved the sensor in the Fuji X100. It had a little bit of magic, a little bit of soul and some mojo going on. So I, I am anxious to see if this has the same thing. I can't say in low light, this thing rocks. I mean, in low light, this thing nailed it. Uh, when I shot some images at a wax museum in low light, which are posted on the website at stefafoto.com. So let's move over to these two bad boys. You have the Leica ME, which I have never shown or talked about, and this has a 35 Sumerit lens on it. And the ME is exactly an M9 without the frame lever preview here, and it doesn't have a USB port. That's it. Um, it's an M9, M9 sensor, M9 body, M9 innards, M9 processor, M9 everything, M9 cheap ass low resolution LCD, which is awful, M9 slow speed, but you know what? It doesn't matter with all that stuff because the quality of the ME, M9, M9P is astounding uh, if you have decent light. At base ISO especially, if you shoot an M9, the quality of the files uh, can be incredible. And those who own these and have shot these know this. Uh, those who hate on the Leica M9 just have no clue about what it can do uh, in the right light. Now at low light, I admit the M9 these days, it sucks. It just is too grainy. The ISO max is 2500 and if you're in dark conditions, you can't use it at 2500. It's just too much grain and mess. So there's the ME. You can see it's uh, the new color scheme. It's like a gunmetal gray. A lot of people hate it and some people love it. I kind of like I kind of like the coloring of it. Um, it's different. It's not the chrome, it's not the black. And here we are with the Leica M. Now this is going to look bigger because I have a bigger lens on it. And I have the 
viewfinder on it as well. Now this is the Olympus VF2, which is the same as the Leica EVF2, except this is, uh, you can get this for about 229 The Leica, I think you can get them for 450 if you shop around. Um, so this is about half the price of the Leica EVF, and it's the same EVF. It's made in the same factory by Epson. Um, I have the eye cup on it. Um, it's, it's exactly the same. The only difference is this says Olympus, which you can technically black out with tape or marker and just go all black. And the Leica one says Leica. And the Leica one, they reshaped the dome a little bit. Uh, other than that, it's the same EVF. I would love to have the Leica, but I just can't justify spending an extra $250 on the same item. So I do have the EVF on, so I wanted to show you guys what it looks like. There it is from the side. You can look down into it, which I love. I've always loved that with this EVF, that you can look down into it to compose and frame your shots. So if we take that EVF off, there you go. So let's look at the back of the M versus the ME M9. As you can see, this has changed into like a D-pad style button instead of a dial. And the dial has been moved up here with a little thumb grip, which is awesome. You have a three inch LCD, which is gorgeous. Uh, and on the M9, you can see there's no thumb grip or dial up here, and this is where the dial was on the M9. So I think the back of the new M is a little more functional and uh, ease of use, and it enhances the usability quite a bit for me. Um, as if you read my M review, which is now posted at stefafoto.com, you can read my conclusion that if I were to buy a camera today and I wanted a Leica M rangefinder and that's what I wanted, hands down out of all of the availability choices, it would be the new M. It just offers so much more in the hardware department over the M9. With that said, the file quality is different. This guy can shoot in low light at high ISO and it's fantastic. This guy cannot really do so very well. But in low light, this might have a little more crispness, crispness to the files, a different look, but the color's a little off, where this one's a little more smoother with richer color. So pick your poison. This has so many more new features, the much better shutter, the better LCD, much faster processing. It's got the S2 Maestro chip in it. There's so many good things, the menus. So $1,500 more for this over this if you buy new. Now, this is still a great camera. It's simplicity at its finest. If you just want to go out mostly daytime shots, this might be the choice for you because of that extra crispness you get. 18 megapixels, 24 megapixels, not that much different. I'm fine with 18. The Sony, once again, is 24 megapixels. Let's put that side by side. So this is the same full frame, looks like the M, both 24 megapixels. And they're both similar in their capabilities. Uh, this does macro, not macro, but up close shooting out of the box. This does not. So, um, and of course, the Sony is not a rangefinder. It is a uh, typical uh, live view camera where this can be live view or a rangefinder. So, this has a lot of cool things um, that I like. And then, of course, you throw in the Fuji to the mix, which is just as capable at high ISO as the M and the Sony, if not a little better from the early test, but I have not confirmed that yet. So, pick your poison, $69.50 for the Leica, $12.99 for the Fuji, about $5,500 for the ME, $27.99 for the Sony. Best image quality of this group, in my opinion, RX1 and Leica M are tied for me. They both have their different looks and feels and mojos, but I like them both. The X100S probably comes next for me. Um, unless, well, base ISO would have to go to the M9, but the, R, the X100S is 1299 uh, So far it seems fantastic. So look for my full review. So this has just been a mishmash look at a few of the popular higher-end cameras right now. You can order the RX1 that's available. The Leica M has a, a wait list right now. I'm not sure how long that is. The Fuji X100S should start shipping from Amazon and the big shops in a, by March 22nd. Today is like March 11th or 12th or something. The ME is widely available. Sometimes they go out of stock, but if you want an M9, 
uh, I would suggest buying the ME because if you buy a used M9 and save yourself a thousand bucks, you have a chance of it breaking down and you have no warranty. Then it's going to cost you a thousand bucks to get it fixed. I would just go with the new ME. It's the same camera unless you really, really love the look of something like the M9P, which is still the most gorgeous Leica camera ever made in my opinion, next to the MP. But um, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed this quick look. This is just kind of a quick video look at all of these cameras. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, thumbs up and subscribe. All the subscribers help me out. More videos come if I get more subscribers. So thanks and always take a look back to stephuffphoto.com. Thank you.